They thought they had Christ in their grasp. They thought they could do with him as they pleased. Thus did they mutilate him and nail him to the cross. They laughed as he promised his vengeance would fall upon them. But he stayed true to his words. The earth they trod upon ran red with blood. The cities they resided in were engulfed by flames. Having witnessed their defeat, they hid amidst the faithful. They thought they would be safe. They were mistaken. Ever steadfast inquisitors, masters at discerning subtleties and signs, followed their trail. With the words of the scripture, did they convert the heretics? With fire, did they cleanse the witches? By their hands were the deceitful vampires impaled. In the name of Christ and for his eternal glory! Welcome to Königstein, Master Inquisitor. My name's Bertram, the Guard Captain. Mortimer Maladine, licensed Inquisitor, in service to the Bishop of Hez Hezron. The Holy Office informed us of your arrival. I must admit that I'm surprised by the purpose of this visit. I don't believe there's a vampire lurking in Königstein. There hasn't been a recorded sighting of one in these parts for what must have been a century. That doesn't mean there isn't one here. Fair enough. That's why my men and I will do our best to assist you. As far as we are able to, of course. Thank you, Captain. I'm just following the mayor's orders, so it's him you should be thanking, not me. If you wish to express your gratitude personally, go to the fair. He's attempting to raise funds there today. My men will show you the way. Now, please excuse me. I need to check on the outposts at the other gates. You were right. He's an Inquisitor. I told you. I spotted the Inquisitor's insignia right away. Only they can wear them. Bloody dog catcher. <laughs> Quiet, fool. Or you'll bring trouble on our heads. What did you call me? Uh, uh, he meant no offense, Master. He doesn't think that at all. Those who disrespect an Inquisitor disrespect the Holy Office. Your commander will hear of this. He will administer your punishment. Don't do it, Master. The captain will throw me out of the guard. I beg you. Have mercy. Why, isn't today a celebration of Christ triumphant? Are you tempting an Inquisitor into committing the sin of mercy? Please. I'll do anything for you. Anything? I swear by the broken cross. The captain mentioned there's a fair currently being held in town. Where exactly? In the town square. You can't miss it, Master. But be wary of ruffians. And sons of whores are always lurking in the stands. Do you know anything about a vampire? One is supposedly lurking around these parts. I haven't heard anything. How about you? Me neither. Um, 
What's gonna happen to me? I'll find you. Should the need arise. Then we shall see the value of your oath. for not letting me compromise in pursuit of the truth. The hour of Vesper's approaches. Attend mass and celebrate our Lord's triumph. Light the votive candle. Just to find the means that lead to the end. Praise his bloody work.
merciless Mary. Grant me the gift of sternness that I may never meet out punishment in moderation. to his vengeful. Fill my heart with the desire for vengeance. Devils who don't shy away from a challenge. A tournament is being held to win the favor of the queen of last year's Mama's Parade. The winner will have the honor of entertaining the beautiful Liliana during the Mama's Parade, which will begin tomorrow after the Vespers service, as is customary. Anyone can try their luck. The entry fee is but one silver angel. Reach into your purses. The collected funds will go toward building a new monument to Christ triumphant. One majestic enough to eclipse that piece of trumpery from Phoebus. Well, well. The Inquisitor himself graces us with his presence. I'm happy to see you, Master. I am Guido von Herzen, the town's mayor. It is nice to meet you, Mayor. What is your name, Master? Mortimer Madadine. Mortimer. I'll be sure to remember that. Emissaries of the Holy Office rarely visit us. I do hope that Captain Bertram gave you a proper welcome. He's a soldier through and through. He can come off as blunt and boorish, but I've yet to meet a better soldier. His behavior was befitting of a guard commander. He brought you no shame. Excellent. I'll gladly speak to you later, but now I must attend to a certain matter. And the tournament, of course. I only wish to thank you for offering assistance in catching the vampire. If you truly wish to thank me, take part in the tournament. You'll be mixing business with pleasure. I shouldn't waste time on idle merriment. Although, since the Monument of Christ Triumphant is at stake, add my name to the list. I'm so happy! The other contestants looked insufferably boring, but you're something else. I noticed it immediately. Well, I'm far from ordinary. You'll be the king of the Mama's Parade, which necessitates that you wear the proper attire. Not far from here, there's a merchant who deals in fancy clothing. Buy a costume from him, even if it's only a mask. Meanwhile, I'll attend to my errands. I will see you later.
<laughs> Finally, an opponent. I was starting to put down roots. supposed to gap. my betters. You've given me a valuable lesson. Thank you. You have to pick up the pail move it to the end of the white line in a vertical position, and then place it in the hole that's been made there. If you drop the pail on your way there, you'll have to start again from the beginning. Seem to be short on strength. Left home without breakfast, did you? Damn, slip from my hand. You have to try harder, Master. Because you don't seem to be doing so well so far. Finally. 
I guess the town's treasury must be empty if you have to raise funds personally. <laughs> no, Master Metterdean, it's not as bad as that. The holiday tournament and fundraiser are simply old customs. Sadly, citizens of Königstein are beginning to suffer from poverty. There are fewer and fewer daredevils willing to join in the revelry. And this year, our goal is a lofty one indeed. However, I'm not certain if the funds we raise will be enough to achieve it. Surely the Cardinal will boast your finances. After all, we're talking about building a monument to Christ triumphant. Oh, I wish I could believe that. Unfortunately, His Eminence considers generosity on par with wastefulness. Hey, children. Have you heard any rumors about a vampire? A vampire? What's that? It's a monster. Granny said it has long fangs and can fly. Andy likes to drink blood. Blood? Why blood? To, to live a long time. So maybe my grandpa is a vampire? He he's got to be a hundred years old. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Rob me. Ruffian! He went there! He stole my purse! The little snot reeks of rotten fish. must have bathed in perfume. Made me lose the scent. Did he get rid of the stench? Got you! It's not him! Show me what's in your hand first. I saw you take it from a town person's car. It's just an apple. What's your name? And where are your parents? I'm Amelia. And my parents and siblings are dead. They all died two years ago from the plague of pox. So, who looks after you now? Nobody. I don't need anyone looking after me. I can look after myself. By stealing. 
I was hungry. You won't fill your belly with just anything. What are you gonna do with me? Hand me over to the guards? Give the apple back and be off. Just don't tell anyone you stole it. It would be better if you said it fell from his car. Off you go then. I need your fill. Welcome, Master Inquisitor. How can I be of service? Inquisitor? Well, we're colleagues, then. Name's Roland. Master Executioner. Mortimer Matadine. Licensed Inquisitor. In service to the Bishop of Hez Hezron. If you need help, stop by the dungeons. I have a few toys there that will certainly make your job easier. Well, merchant, you've wasted enough of my time. Got anything for the executioner? Here are the mask and costume of the merry executioner from Tianon. The butcher who disappeared off the face of the earth a few years ago? He was a devil. So devils dragged him under. He's sure to be dancing in hell as we speak. <laughs> Poppycock! Piss off, or I'll give you a good lashing. How did the mask of the merry executioner from Tianan find its way to a merchant's stand? Look at it, Inquisitor! Beautiful, isn't it? vision. Why would Christ decide to send me one now? What is it he wanted to tell me? <laughs> What's with you, Inquisitor? You seem at a loss for words. I bet you'd like to buy the costume of the Merry Executioner for yourself. Absolutely not. I was first. Damned headsman. He paid with gold he got from a convict on the scaffold. I saw the wretch put a coin in his hand, begging for one clean cut. What you mean? Didn't it take him three swings to behead the man? The butcher revels in cruelty. Supposedly, he lost his position as royal executioner. You're better off taking your own life than letting him lay his mitts on you. From where did you get the mask and costume of the Merry Executioner from Tiananmen? I knew him, so I know that he considered the Jester costume a shameful symbol of degeneration and brutishness, which is why he hid it. No one knew where. I... bought it, Master. Where? And from whom? Talk! An old lady sold it to me. One I met on the road, leading through the woods. I saw her dog digging out the Merry Executioner's outfit. I'd seen the man many times in the past, so I immediately recognized the mask. I paid a fair price for it. The scoundrel's hiding something. I can feel it.
Looks like the collar I saw in the vision. Dog's bedding. If memory serves, the old lady called it friend. It's worth a try. Friend! Shut your mouth, smut! I'll beat you so bad you won't have the strength to hold your wounds! Leave it alone, brat. Our Lord treated lesser creatures with love and respect. You'd be wise to do the same. Take it, sir. Pop told me to teach the dog discipline. I was only doing what he told me. Something stinks here. No one names a dog friend if they want to sell it. Where did you get it from? We bought it from an old lady we met in the woods. Come on, You're coming with me. Upon reaching Golgotha, the centurion in command of the legionnaires gazed upon Jesus and said, Hop up onto the cross I've set up for you! Jesus obeyed the command, as he didn't want the centurion's work to have been for the Lord. However, his time upon the cross was brief. It's pretty uncomfortable up here. He longed for his freedom. So he broke the patibulum and leapt to the ground. You destroyed my beautiful cross! Woe upon you! The centurion threw himself at the Messiah, sword in hand. But Jesus did not allow him to strike. He who raises the cross dies by the cross. He seized the broken arm of the cross and struck first. Emperor Tiberius became wroth upon learning that. He decided to deal with Christ personally. You killed my loyal servant. It'll cost you your head. That I swear. Here's my payment. Jesus snatched the centurion's sword and cut off Tiberius' head. Thus, fulfilling the oath and payment of one. The Emperor is dead. Long live Jesus triumphant, our Lord and everlasting King! And that is how Christ claimed the throne of the Emperor.
<laughs> Stop it, friend. <laughs> Stop. He likes you. He's yours. Really? Take good care of him. Hear that, friend? Will you come with me? <coughs> Thank you. Let's go. that I may never meet our punishment in moderation.
amulet betrayed you. Should have sold me the mask and costume when I was asking nicely, witch. You're probably wondering how I knew you for a witch. Hmm? Your amulet betrayed you. <coughs> we'll meet again, Knave. I don't think so. Farewell, friend. You lied to me, merchant. You didn't buy the Mary Executioner's costume. You took it from the old lady that you burnt at the stake. How do you know all this? You can't hide the truth from an Inquisitor. Didn't you know that? Forgive me, Master. I didn't want to speak of it in front of my customers. They wouldn't buy my wares that they heard. She was a witch. A real witch. I did a good deed by killing her. You would have done the same in my place. Give back the Mandrake amulet you took from her. The Holy Office does not tolerate lynching. Only licensed Inquisitors are allowed to sentence people to the stake, and only after a thorough investigation. You are not a licensed Inquisitor, are you? Guards! Yes, Master? The merchant violated an Inquisitorial prerogative. Take him to the dungeon. Leave me be! I haven't done anything wrong! She was a witch! Your fucking hands off my father, you scoundrels! Tell the punk to look after the stand, or I'll confiscate the merchandise to cover the costs of your trial. Do as he says, son. And don't worry, we'll see each other soon. Now that this is settled, I could use some wine.
Have you heard anything about the vampire? My lord, I've heard talk of vampires, devils, dogs, and cats living together. Mass hysteria. Once, I even heard a tale of a dragon near Krakow that no one could vanquish until one drunkard came along and outdrank the beast. Supposedly, they went at it for the whole day and night. At dawn, the dragon was so parched that he immediately dashed to the river and guzzled so much water it made him burst. Folks talk of all things here, Inquisitor, and it's all nonsense, as that's all they can spew once they've gotten good and drunk. Is your wine any good? Finest Rhenish vintage, Master Inquisitor. Sweet as the body of a virgin, and strong to boot. Pour a rummer. That'll be five silver angels. That is a truly noble beverage. So take six. The holy office is paying. There you are. Do you have the mask? I didn't find anything to my liking. Then we'll just have to think of something. Now come, you'll walk me home. On the way, you'll tell me why you were dispatched to Königstein. If it's not a secret, that is. It's not. Oh. Everyone will be talking. Mordima, come here. Your queen waits. About it soon anyway. The Holy Office received news of a vampire prowling the town. I am to see if there's any truth to it. A vampire in Königstein? This is the first time I'm hearing about it. The Holy Office hears much more than ordinary people. So then, how do you intend to find it? I'll start with the inns. I'll listen to the rumors. Ask around with the staff and the regulars. Then you should definitely stop by the Frisky Mermaid. It's the town's most popular inn. The fat innkeeper is likely to know about everything that's going on in Königstein. Robbers, kill them in the name of the Lord. Red coats, like it. We are grateful for the rescue. You've arrived just in time. Such was God's will. Who were the assailants? I don't know. I didn't recognize any of them. I know that one from the harbor. Must have been part of that gang. We've been looking for you, mistress. The Cardinal asks that you come to the Cathedral post-haste. You? I don't know. Who are you? Mortimer Matadine. 
licensed inquisitor, in service to the Bishop of Hezezran. Forgive the insistence, Master Maddardine. Welcome to Königstein. I shall inform the Cardinal of your arrival. His eminence is currently preoccupied, but he will certainly wish to speak with you later. Come to the cathedral between the first and second tolling of the bells for Vespers. It is the time of day when the Cardinal talks to worshippers. Do not worry about the bodies of these villains. The town guard will dispose of them. Tell the Cardinal that I will be there. Please forgive my brusqueness, Mordemar. This assault made me lose my composure. Sadly, I must leave you here. Duty calls. I'll see you tomorrow at the Mama's Parade. Duty? Then she works for the Cardinal. Good to know. They reek of rotten fish. That small-time ruffian had the same stench about him. Maybe he was working for them. The Cardinal's soldier mentioned a gang prowling the harbor. If I found their hideout, I could recover my sure skin. Hmm. It's worth a try. stone.
Oh Lord, protect me from giving in to the sin of mercy. fish. Maybe it'll lead me to the gang's hideout. No lock. The door's been bolted from the inside. Yeah. 
spare me, sir. I beg you. I have children. Who sent you after me? A woman hired us in the harbor. She wore an expensive Venetian mask, so I didn't see her face. But her voice seemed familiar. She was wearing white gloves and paid with silver. Have you heard anything about a vampire? It's what the noble folk call us. The have-nots. They say we suck the town and its funds dry. But it's been years since anyone's heard of any actual vampires. Do you know who I am? Inquisitor! The whole town's been talking about you! And yet you decided to come after me. A man can't say no to coin when he's got none to feed his children. I should kill you, but I will spare your life. Should you meet the woman in the Venetian mask again, tell her that an Inquisitor is not easily frightened. Strange coins. for sure skin. I was right. And what's this? A city map with underground entrances marked on it. Could be useful. There's nothing for me here. Time to look into the vampire case. I hope they've got good wine at the Frisky Mermaid. mask. An expensive one. Half of them wear such masks, Master. Each prattling on about how her mask is special, but they all look the same to me.
Did anything happen? A harlot's been murdered. Gruesome sight. that I may never meet our punishment in moderation. Sent for the master. What's everyone staring at? Get out of this camp. It's not a sight for children. Give this to the owner of the Frisky Mermaid Inn. Tell him to prepare a room for me for the night. There's a silver angel in it for you if you do a good job. But if you rob me, I'll find you and burn you at the stake like a witch. Saw something. Suckers are still around, are they? In Koenigstein? It can't be. Well, there's this one doctor. I heard there's none better at bloodletting. He'll put leeches on you to suck the disease right out. But he'll also drain your purse dry, the bloodsucker. Whore in town. A hermodite, Hermodite, something. She's got both a fanny and a prick. <laughs> so you and your old lady can ride her together. They say lines are forming to see her. That's how eager to fuck she is. Face. 
Yes, it's Roxanne, a whore from Burgundy. I saw her around the inn. I even made use of her services a few times. She was good at her job. Half the town's humped that one. I don't know. I'm not from around here. I arrived only yesterday for the fair. Don't you know? Satan! It's his doing! He messes with people's heads! The way I see it, you're all fucking suspects. You, me, all of them. <laughs> Fuckers. Well, I found out quite a lot. Something stinks of piss here. Maybe someone was using the outhouse while the murder was being committed. Hey, hey. It seems to be a piece of a cane. There's no blood on it. I wonder, could it be related to the case? like someone took a bath in manure. Hello, friend. Waiting for your snot-nosed mistress. If that's true, you have nothing to fear. Get up! You're coming with me. And don't try to run, or you'll feel my sword. Hey, you there! Get over here! Yes, Master? Where's Captain Bertram? Interrogating guests at the inn. Who's this bum? And how did he get his hands on a cardinal soldier's coat? I hope we'll find that out soon enough. Watch him. I must have words with your commander. I'm innocent, Master. Shut your mouth, you filthy bastard! No one's asking your opinion.
friend, waiting for your snot-nosed mistress. I hope that scamp's making arrangements for my room. Where were you at that time? Here! Carl can vouch for me. I, I... I was having a beer with him. It's true. It's true. Captain! Forgive me, Master, but I don't have time right now. I know what happened. I saw the corpse. I came because I managed to detain a papa who was behaving suspiciously near the crime scene. Your men are guarding him outside. Off with you. He was wiping blood from this dagger. A strange blade. I've never seen any of its ilk. Nor have I. That is why we must approach this case with due diligence. Especially because the murder bears the marks of a ritualistic killing. Ritualistic? The victim's kidneys were removed. How horrid. That's not all. The suspect was wearing a coat like those worn by the Cardinal's soldiers. A pauper? How is that possible? I assure you that a thorough interrogation will help us determine the facts. I would like to conduct it personally. Preferably in a place that's meant for such purpose. As you wish, Master. I shall lock the suspect in the dungeons. One more thing, Captain. I came to the defense of a lady named Liliana today. We were assaulted by robbers in an alley. The commander of His Eminence's soldiers informed me about the incident. He failed to mention Liliana, though. Odd. Residents of Königstein know the girl serves the Cardinal. They also know that His Eminence doesn't tolerate attacks on his people. Attend to this pauper, Captain. I wish to talk to Master Manadine in private. Is something wrong with you? It's just garlic. My stomach doesn't agree with it, and the innkeeper uses rather excessive amounts of it. Luckily, the wine provides a measure of relief. Sit down, please. I would like to talk about the task that brought you here, Master. Do you really believe there's a vampire hiding in town? It's absurd. There hasn't been a vampire attack recorded around here for nearly a century. I would know if it were otherwise. Are you claiming that my superiors have made an error? God forbid. However, I do believe the Holy Office should look into a more important matter. Strange events have been taking place here for some time now. Meaning? For years now, the town's been the setting for a dispute between the Cardinal, whom the have-nots hate, and the universally adored Countess Isabella. The Harlot's murder may be a part of that conflict, as could be the assault on Liliana. I have my suspicions, but no concrete proof. I know that the Cardinal keeps his secrets in an office that only his monks can access. I've also managed to ascertain that there's a secret chamber at the Countess's palace. My spies were not able to infiltrate it, but you, Master, you just might. Should you accomplish it, the truth would be revealed. What truth? As I have already said, all I have are suspicions. But the inn is not a good place to talk about this. These walls have ears. I must leave town today, so let us meet at the city hall in two days' time. By then, you'll have become acquainted with the case. If you decide I'm right, I'll introduce you to my Persian and tell you everything I've managed to find out so far. Your Persian? Yes, my Persian. The only one I trust. What say you, Master? This is not why I came here. But all right. Perhaps we'll catch two birds with one stone. Excellent. I knew I could count on you. Your station as Inquisitor should guarantee your safety, but proceed cautiously nonetheless. Just in case, I'll announce that you're helping the Captain catch the Harlot's killer. It will explain your interest in the case. See you in two days, Master Manadine. Nothing is an accident. If God put the mayor in my path, 
that he suddenly had an important reason for it. Maybe that will lead me to the vampire. Did you do as I asked? Sure did. I'll be back in the morning to collect the silver angel you promised me. I'm happy to have you under my roof, Master. The servant girl will get your room ready. Tolling of the bell. Time to go meet the cardinal. Light the votive the candle. Today we celebrate Christ's triumphant.
merciless Mary. Grant me the gift of sternness that I may never meet out punishment in moderation. For Master Matadine, I am pleased to make your acquaintance. Greetings, Your Eminence. I see good manners are not amongst the subjects taught at the Inquisitorium. We are taught independence from authorities, be they secular or ecclesiastic which is guaranteed to the Inquisitors by canonical law. Your Eminence is doubtless aware of that. You confuse not giving hierarchs of the Church proper respect with inquisitorial independence. I am surprised to see that the difference is lost on you. I am but a simple Inquisitor, striving to execute the Lord's will. A poor excuse. I received notice of your coming to Königstein. The Holy Office sent a letter. They spoke highly of you, but I see that it was idle praise. Let us dispense with etiquette, then. Speak freely. What is it you want? I wish to talk. Privately. I do not appreciate your tone, Inquisitor. You demand when you should be asking. I'm pleading, then. Let us be calm. We should allow Master Madadine to satisfy the local custom. It will make matters much clearer. My name is Ingvar. I am Königstein's chief herbalist and medic. 
I am at your service, should you have need of me. For now, however, pick a card. We ask this of every person meeting his eminence for the first time. It is our way of verifying that they don't bear us any ill will. Verifying? In what way, exactly? I know what you're thinking, Master Matadine, but you are mistaken. It is not witchcraft. It is the deck of St. Timerius, whose sepulchre can be found in the cathedral. I entrusted this artifact to the Venerable Ingvar. The cards reveal the truth about people. They're ordinary in appearance, but once a person reaches out for one, the image painted on it immediately changes to reveal their true nature. Try and see for yourself. And we shall see with you. Well, as long as they're the cards of a saint. Card Blanche. Can't say I'm surprised. I must get back to the clinic. Until we meet again, Master Matadine. Soon, I hope. Damn beggars! What are you waiting for, fools? Get rid of them now! Their stench is unbearable. Let us go, Inquisitor. We'll talk inside the cathedral. The pleasant aroma of incense. How it differs from the stench of the street. I thought Inquisitors only appreciated the odor of burning flesh. Does your eminence know anything about the vampire hiding in town? A vampire? That's rich. If one were to appear in town, I would have dealt with it myself. I wouldn't need the Holy Office to help. Bloodsuckers are a popular topic amongst the stinking beggars at the harbor. But they use the term to describe the likes of me, the nobility. Have you come here to talk or sightsee? It's what the wretched common folk have taken to calling us. Has your eminence ever laid eyes on a dagger such as this? It was found at the scene of the crime. Sadly, I have not. But I can ascertain its origin. Give it to me. I am sorry, your eminence, but I cannot give it to you. It is the murder weapon that could have been used to perform a forbidden ritual. I will need it during my investigation. A harlot was murdered today near the Frisky Mermaid Inn. The manner in which the deed was done is reminiscent of a ritual, which is why the mayor asked for my help in capturing the perpetrator. A witness saw a suspicious person in a red coat, like those worn by your eminence's soldiers, did. Are you suggesting that one of my men did it? Don't be insolent, Inquisitor. The harlot must have gotten on someone's bad side. Likely a competitor whom she'd been poaching customers from. They too like to don themselves in crimson. Such meretricious horrors defile the cardinal colors. There's much talk in town about the Countess. It was my impression that the common folk adore her. I heard rumors that your eminence has been in conflict with her. The Countess has been working to undermine my authority for many years. As a good Christian, I repay her in kind. You should be questioning her, Inquisitor. Not me. I know that Isabella has an interest in strange objects. 
I suspect she uses them to perform pagan rites. I wouldn't be at all surprised to learn that she was the one behind the harlot's murder. You said yourself that the murder was ritualistic. Does the name Reuchlin mean anything to you, Your Eminence? Johannes Reuchlin. Of course. Reuchlin was the predecessor of our medic, the Venerable Ingvar. He died suddenly a year ago, so he couldn't have murdered the courtesan. Will your eminence allow me to avail myself of the library's resources? Sometimes the matters that come to light in the course of an investigation merit a thorough analysis. My soldiers did you a favor today. You have yet to repay it. And you're already asking for another one? Brothers in faith should support one another. I am happy to hear you say that, Inquisitor. Come morning, I shall instruct the monks to give you access to anything you need. I hope you'll give me the same treatment, should the time come when I'm in need of your support. I'm not asking you to stay for Mass. I'm familiar with the ways of Inquisitors. So, I know that you prefer to pray in solitude. Indeed we do. It is how God allows us to see the truth. Yes, I heard about that. You possess sure skin, Your Eminence. It was my belief that only Inquisitors were allowed to use it. Well, not only, as you can see. It was the Pope himself who gifted it to me years ago. So, where is it you plan on praying today? Every place is a good place to pray, Your Eminence. I won't keep you then.
buzz approaches, attend mass and celebrate our Lord's triumph. Light. Welcome, Master Inquisitor. In which cell is the prostitute's murder suspect being held? You'll have to ask Executioner Roland. He's in charge around here. You'll likely find him in the torture chamber. Fear. Blood, excrement, and death. All dungeons stink the same. By the Lord's sword, Roland put on the costume of the Merry Executioner. He even put on the mask. Mortimer is stopping by. The costume's sure to catch his eye. I put it on. I climbed inside. But my true nature I won't hide. All I wanted was to see what the Tiannan man had felt when at dawn he donned this pelt. Now I know of his past glory. Cause the mask told me the story. 
The reason for his state of Mary was the mask he kept on wearing. It puts rhymes right in your noggin. Gives ideas about some flogging. How to make your victim hurt. Where to poke to make him squirt. You be having so much fun. You won't even miss the sun. Wait a moment. Wait a... Spell. Something brought him to this hell. If you're here to spill some guts, I might go a little nuts. <laughs> this right here is my domain. I decide who brings the pain. He's rhyming like the merry executioner. Has he gone mad? Or is he just pretending? I'm only here to interrogate the prisoner, Master Roland. Calls us master! Such elation! Sits to watch in admiration! How a man of unmatched skill makes the convict promptly spill! Stay yourself, Master Roland. I don't believe torture is necessary. Yeah, I'll go off to scoff and snort, since you took away my sport. Did you kill the courtesan? Tell the truth. Remember that inquisitors can tell if someone is lying. I, I didn't do it, sir. I, I swear. Ha! They all swear right from the start. But then, they have a change of heart. Did you know the murdered harlot? No, sir. I only saw her a few times soliciting customers in the street. The cursed harlot would undress without shame. They're all the same. One day they'll be our doom, damned bitches! Because of them, our fate will be that of Adam in paradise! Where did you get the coat and the dagger? Some woman threw them away, I swear. First, she got rid of the dagger, and shortly after, the coat. I, I was in the outhouse and saw everything through a hole in the door. The only thing I didn't see was her face. I, I put on the coat because it still gets chilly during the evenings. A and I took the dagger to sell to the Countess. She likes strange items like this. She sends her servant girls to the harbor to fetch them for her. Usually the dark-skinned one, uh, Nontel. Her girls are easy to make out because they wear silver necklaces, each with a purple stone in them. It's how merchants know to serve them first. You lie! Tell me what really happened, or I'll give you to the executioner. Be quiet now. We'll get to talking. I can't wait to come a-knocking. I'm telling the truth, and I swear! I don't think he's lying, but it's worth double-checking anyway in the homeworld. Take me to an empty cell, Master Roland. I shall reflect on this wretch's words by devoting myself to prayer. I'll take you where you wish, my lord. A peaceful cell to hang your sword. Come, Inquisitor! Hear my sweet! I have a place to rest your feet. Pray as long as you desire. Your companion here's expired. We have a comedian.
Is there no other cell? I have victims beyond measure. There's no place to suit your pleasure. So be it then. I shall pray in here. Meanwhile, watch the prisoner. But don't you dare touch him. Guarding folks is one great chore. If you do it, you'll get bored. Think I'd rather just be naughty and treat this order like the potty. Luckily, this one doesn't stink yet. Our father, what our king, bereaves of our weakness, lest we forgive those who trespass against us. Draw our evil from darkness, so we may vanquish in thy name. Amen.
esto que sigue.
dagger. And why is it all bloody? God, I'm merciful. What have I done? What is this? Oh, God! Wayward woman, where's the dagger? What have you done with it? Who said that? You are, Mortimer. While to God you have been praying all this time, I have been playing. Impossible! Go, sound hell's bells! An alien life form in him dwells. How did it happen? I caught some rats. Yes, quite a lot. Put them all into a pot. Added heat to make them eager. Yes, to feast on, although meager, flesh and blood and all the innards that gave life to this here sinner. I forbade you from touching him, Hangman. Why, the deed was not my doing. Twas the rats that did the chewing. <laughs> the pauper was innocent. You're not pleased with the results. I do admit to certain faults. Before long, I will do better. When you see it, you will cheer, knowing that I have no peer. He doesn't care about what he's done in the slightest, and he keeps rhyming. He's either gone mad, or... By the nails and thorns. When I first came here, Roland said that the Merry Executioner's mask was putting ideas and rhymes in his head. Could it be cursed? There's only one way to find out. Want to strip me of my mask? That won't be an easy task. Catch me first, dear Mortimer. Although, I do believe you'll err.
shall make him disappear! <laughs> Tis a trick! <laughs> I'm not happy about it one bit, Scamp. What are you doing here? I brought the Executioner's supper from the inn. I do it often. The innkeeper gives me a hot meal for it. You shouldn't have come here. The Executioner has gone mad. It's no easy thing to quarter. It is a tricky kind of slaughter. Prisoners succumb right quick, so they're rude. To make them last another tick. Whose voice is that? It's Roland's. Bloody Joker wants to hurt you. Leave that basket and come with me. I'll get you out of here. The scoundrel wants to steal the girl. Plotting mischief, I can tell. 
If he means to cause me trouble, I'll just have to cause him double. sword. He's barricaded himself from the inside. I have to talk to the guard captain. Maybe his men will be able to remove the mask from the executioner's face. Where's your captain? I need to speak to him. Right now, um... He should be at the inn. Let's go. I'll walk you home. I don't have a home. Where do you live then? Here and there. There are many places in town to spend the night safely. Where do you get the money for clothes and food? All over. I do odd jobs. Sometimes I'll find something or get something from someone. And sometimes you'll steal something, eh? Sometimes. Life on the street isn't easy. I'm not one to complain. I'm not the only foundling in the world, you know. Others are worse off. You're quite the little scamp, aren't you? I know it's not easy for you. I was an orphan, too. I turn here. See you later, Inquisitor. See you later, scamp.
I have your room ready and waiting upstairs, Master Inquisitor. Pour us two ales, Innkeeper. I'm paying. I interrogated the pauper in the dungeons. He proved to have been innocent. Did you release him? I didn't make it in time. Execution had starving rats gnaw their way through his belly. <laughs> Excuse me, what? He's wearing an odd mask. I feared there's a curse on it that pushed him to do it. I wanted to get it off his face, but the devil barricaded himself in the dungeons. Mind sending your men? I'll get to it, but only after tomorrow's mummer's parade. All sorts of cranks have come to town for it. They're all drinking and brawling. I have to maintain order, but I don't have enough men. I prefer you to attend to it immediately. I don't have the men, Inquisitor. All I can do is close off the entrance to the dungeons to keep the Executioner from leaving. So be it then. Thank you for treating me, Captain. Next time I'm buying. you promised me you couldn't wait until I was awake but you are awake Ugh. and I was starting to like you catch the innkeeper said to tell you that he's made you a meal tell him I'll be right down Welcome, Master Inquisitor. You slept well, I trust. Not bad. Isn't that a Munich-made dagger used by the Landsknechts? I see you know your arms, Master. It is a memento from my time in the Emperor's army. It never leaves my side. Sit at the table. I shall bring your food. Made you some pear stuffed pike. Smells exquisite. Do you need anything else? Information. Did you know Johannes Reuchlin? Of course. He was a regular here. He usually sat alone in the corner with a jug of the cheapest wine. Folks called him a penny pincher. Rightly so, I think, as he never tipped me. What else do you know about Reuchlin? He was friendly with the Cardinal. 
He also spent a lot of time with his student, Ingvar, who took over his duties. Spent a few years in Kievan Rus. Supposedly, he was doing research there that's forbidden in the Empire. But I don't know how much truth there is to that. He was a good medic. People knew and valued him, but nobody came to the funeral. Ingvar suspected that Roiklin had died of an infectious disease. He feared that the plague would spread around town, which is why only a few monks took part in the ceremony. What can you tell me about this coin? It looks to be a widow's penny. They used to be minted in Königstein a long time ago, before the line appeared on the town's coat of arms. It was one of these coins that gave us the remains of St. Terentius Rufus. I never saw anyone pay with them. Have you ever seen a dagger such as this? No, my lord. Many travelers stay here. I've seen many a weapon, but none such as this. It seems old. Ask the brothers Finkelstein about it. They're triplets that trade in antiques at the harbor where they've got a warehouse. You won't have trouble picking them out, as they quarrel constantly. Have you heard anything about a vampire? You mean there's a vampire in Königstein? Christ, unmerciful. Protect us with your sword. Thank you, innkeeper. You were very helpful. I've yet to learn anything about the vampire. The cursed bloodsucker must have hidden itself well. It surely knows I'm looking for it by now. I should stop asking around. Once the beast feels more secure, it'll drop its guard and make a mistake. Then, it's mine. Little thief. You won't get away from me again, stinker. The little ship with the red hot iron. Maybe that'll teach him not to steal. Or return the pouch to the monk. As you wish, master. Well, lad, we're about to fry your cheeks. This is yours, Venerable Father. I don't know how to thank you, Master Inquisitor. This is all I have in this world. You don't look like a member of the local order. That is true, for I am not. I am Lothar, one of the seekers of truth in divine revelations. We are a small and poor congregation. There are but a few of us in the whole empire. What brings you to Königstein? The local library and its bountiful book collection. I will spend the next few days there. Should you need any help, that's where to find me. Jesus, for 
not letting me compromise in pursuit of the truth. they found in the old forest. Them two that got torn apart by wolves? They say there's barely anything left of them. Tis their own fault. If they didn't go that way at night, they'd still live, I'd wager. Can't be pulling those tricks with us. We don't haggle. Perhaps we can make an exception for our esteemed customer. You must abide by your principles, dear brother. No exceptions. What are you playing at? Good merchant, bad merchant. You think I don't know this trick? Besides, I'm not buying anything anyway. I have no money. Then what are you packing us for? Fuck off! Calm down, brother, or you bring on a fit. It's an African aphrodisiac. Three drops are enough to make your old man a stallion. My old man could use an entire jug. Who's selling it? The brothers Finkelstein. And triplets that argue all the time. Yep. They've a warehouse at the end of the pier. Old traps. We've got a customer. How can we be of service, Master Inquisitor? They say you're experts on antiques. Tis all we trade in, Master. We are but humble merchants. Can you tell me anything about this dagger? Blades like these were used by the guardsmen who fell at the side of Emperor Valens in the Battle of Adrianople. The Visigoths traded their weapons to the Persians. It's likely Vikings who brought it to the north of the continent. The fuck are you on about? What guardsmen? What Vikings? 
It's clearly an athame, a ceremonial dagger used by the Kievan Rus's witches. Very old, to be sure. In my opinion, it belonged to the Dulabees. It probably made its way here as a spoil of war. <laughs> you don't know anything, lamb chops. An athame should have a black hilt, and this dagger doesn't have one. It's a Crimean blade, probably used by their medics to draw blood. It is nice to see you again, fair Montal. The Countess's trusted servant. She's wearing the necklace with the purple stone that the Papa mentioned. I believe I saw one like it in my vision and in the Umworld. Spare me the pleasantries. I am not impressed by courtship. I am interested only in your merchandise. As ever, beautiful, cold, and nut. Sadly, we have nothing new. Our ship hasn't yet come to harbor. What about this dagger? It looks interesting. I'm sure the Countess would like it. I'm sorry, but it is not for sale. However, I would be honored if the Countess would meet with me. Well, well. The Inquisitor. The town bustles with rumors about you. The Countess has been very busy of late, but I'm sure she will not refuse an emissary of the Holy Office. Expect a messenger with a note. Master Matterdy. Lovely lady, isn't she? All right then. We had us a chat, but did no business. Care to buy something, Master? That's right, Inquisitor. Have a look at our wares. What is this? Truthfully, we don't know. The sea threw it ashore and to give them. Cheap imitation. A statue without hands. Who'd want to buy that? on fencing. Shame is not a work on ancient weapons. Wait a minute. I have an entire library at my disposal. Maybe I'll learn something about the dagger there. Some profit you are. If you encouraged me like you did him, I wouldn't have bought anything either. didn't waste any time. They were quick to dole out the punishment.
Hello, Master Matadine. I am Brother Marrow, the librarian. I was told that you might stop by. Uh, what can I help you with? Where do these stairs lead? To the Cardinal's office and chambers, in which we keep priceless books and scrolls. Some of them, written by the Apostles themselves. You keep such precious relics here. Why aren't they guarded? Oh, but they are. Uh, we have two excellent guards. The first one is the lock on the doors to this library, as it was fashioned by a master of his craft. Those doors will not open without a special key. The second is his eminence's hands. Hands? Sounds mysterious. Exactly as it is meant to sound, Master Madity. I'd like to take a look in there. The Cardinal did not agree to it. I am an Inquisitor, Brother Merald. I have the right to. In the Cardinal's house, you are above all else a guest, Master Madity. Please, respect that. Might I look over the book collection? Of course. I'm looking for a treatise on ancient weapons. I'm sorry, Master, uh, but you will find no such book here. We do not deal in matters of the military or arms. They are the domain of other orders. A messenger from the Countess has a message for you, Master Madadine. He's waiting by the entrance. How did he find me here? <laughs> Tis a small town. Hello, Master Inquisitor. The Countess has invited you to her palace. When? Immediately. Tell her that I'll arrive shortly. 
Leaving already, Master? I shall return soon. The doors of the library remain open to you. I won't close them until the second toll of the bells calling for Vespers. Inquisitor! It's nice to see you again. Hi, Scam. What brings you here? Nothing. Wandering the town aimlessly. And you? Where are you off to? <sighs> you need to know everything, huh? I'm going to the Countess's palace. There is a shortcut there. Here at last, Inquisitor. Follow me. You took your time getting here, making us wait. I didn't know I was supposed to hurry. <sighs> your arrogance will one day be your undoing, Inquisitor. Does that worry you? Quite the contrary. I get the feeling that you are not fond of me. How did you figure that out? Well, I have a few talents. I wonder what they are. One of them pleases you greatly. I don't think so.
Wait here. I'll notify the Countess of your arrival. I doubt you'll be interested in the displays gathered in the palace, but have a look at them if you'd like. St. Andrew's armor. Legend says that Quintus Sutorius Macro broke his sword on it. A piece of the Pataboom. Interesting. I thought all pieces of the broken cross were kept at the Vatican. Silver pieces of purification. It was with them that Judas redeemed his sins. And what is that? Amazing. These are the blueprints for St. Peter's lockpicks. Supposedly they could open any lock. Master Matterdean. Countess? Let us walk in the garden. I've heard many good things about you, Master Matterdean. It is said you are the pride of the Holy Office. Educated, intelligent, and ruthless. Did I leave anything out? It is nice to hear that you think highly of me, my lady. I didn't say that. You supposedly inquired of the brothers Finkelstein about a certain dagger. Might I have a look at it? Of course. Don't waste time on trifles, Master Matadine. Can you tell me anything about it, my lady? Many things. It is a Pugio, a dagger used by Roman legionaries. It is at least 1,500 years old and belongs to me, although it never made its way into my hands. I don't understand. A certain merchant imported it for me. Unfortunately, Nantil was not able to collect it. The merchant, in good faith, gave the dagger to a woman wearing the necklace of my missing servant. My lady, are you suggesting that someone impersonated your servant to acquire the dagger? A Pugio is not worth much. I believe this person wanted to hurt me. They collected the dagger from the merchant and then threw it away. Which is why you found it. Ultimately, however, the blade found its rightful owner. Give it to me, please. Sadly, I cannot return it to you, Countess. The dagger was used to perform a bloody ritual. 
It constitutes evidence of a crime. I must keep it until the investigation is over. Yes, I heard about the poor girl found near the inn. What is your opinion of the Cardinal, Countess? His eminence is a leech, possessed by a lust for wealth. He's poisoning the town instead of healing it. Beware of him, Inquisitor, as he can be cruel and soulless. His beliefs border on heresy. He thinks that humankind is inherently evil, and hence deserves annihilation. That is a serious accusation, Countess. Can you support it with evidence? Sadly, I can't. The Cardinal said it to me many years ago in a private conversation. Do go to his office, though. I'm sure His Eminence's private correspondence will confirm my words. Easier said than done. Follow the example set by our Lord, Master Maddardine. Ability is born from desire. My lady, do you have any idea as to who might have killed the harlot? Sadly, I don't. I imagine the Cardinal tried to accuse me of this crime. I hope that you didn't pay it any mind, Master. I've been helping the least fortunate for years. Thus, the claim that I murdered a poor Jezebel on a whim is an insult to my dignity. My lady, I notice that you have an interest in antiquity. Undoubtedly, yes. Is that a passion of yours? More like my life's purpose. I am a devout follower of Christ's teachings, so I study them in every way I can. I don't understand. You study the mysteries of faith by collecting old sculptures and paintings. How does that work? It's simple, really. By surrounding myself with items that may have been in the presence of our Lord, it is as if I am communing with our Lord himself. My lady, have you heard anything about a vampire lurking in the town? I know nothing about that. I've only heard that you're looking for it. Would you be willing to tell me the name of the merchant who imported the Pugil for you? I'd like to talk to him. I'm sorry, Master Madadine, but I cannot do this. I promised him discretion. I insist, Countess. I gave him my word, Inquisitor, and I do not intend on breaking it for you. You'll find answers to many of your questions in the Cardinal's office, Master Madadine. I know it's not an easy place to infiltrate. Nevertheless, you should try, for all our sakes. My lady, the guests have arrived. Farewell, Inquisitor. I hope we meet again. And I hope we don't. The exit is over there, Inquisitor. What a mess. The Cardinal accuses the Countess, who accuses the Cardinal, and the Mayor accuses them both. I wonder how much truth there is to what Isabella said about His Eminence's office. I'm tempted to find out. I could try to gain access after the library is closed.
Christ who is vengeful. Fill my heart with the desire for vengeance. Second toll of the bells. Brother Marrow is closing the library. If I'm to go inside, I have to steal the keys from him. People monks should know where Brother Merrill is. I will try to listen to their conversations discreetly. Oh Lord, protect me from giving in to the sin of mercy. After mass? Sure. Uh, I'm broke. Spent all my money there yesterday. You can always watch. You'd be a bouncing rumps. Like hell. You'll be missing out. Hasty Greta promised to dress as the cairn. Well, why didn't you start with that? Where are we going? Did Venerable Europe in the book. Yes, many brothers died because of it. Why did he do it? He wanted to punish those who read it, despite the prescription. How did Brother William discover it? He used Occam's razor. Meaning what? He slit Brother Yorga's throat? I don't know. I don't know the details. How was your day? Oh, don't ask. I've been walking around town since morning, calling on the rabble to pray. I can't feel my legs, and this bloody bell has given me a splitting headache. At least you got to walk around. 
I was stuck standing by the library stairs like simian stylites. It can't go on like this. Where is Brother Marold? It's high time we talk to him about this. I don't know. We should ask Sven. He's Marold's new ass kisser. Sven? Which one is he? He is just now speaking to Brother Lothar of the Seekers of Truth in Divine Revelations. It looks like Brother Sven knows where I'll find Merald. But where is Sven? Rifling through books can become tiresome. God's word will clear your mind. Today, Brother Merrill will preach it at the cathedral. The Pope himself has praised his charisma. Yes, I've heard of him, and I'll gladly attend. Let us go then. <laughs> Won't do me any harm to listen to God's word, too. Domine Deus Rex Celestis, Deus Pata Omnipotens. Domine Fili Unigenite, yes, the most of leftist habit, Domine Deus Filius Patris. This makes my task. Easy. If I steal the keys and turn them before the ceremony ends, Mal will be the most of the gods. Must hurry. Suscipe deprecation in this room. He said, There's a dexter on Patris. Quoniam Pupu. Nice painting. Interesting. Interesting style. And as he descended from the cross, the Lord of by your greatness, you dare raise a hand against me. Thus I broke Nice painting. Now, I stand before you and say this. Interesting. I shall build walls and roofs of fields of earth. I shall bring my battering ram to your gate. And your towers I shall topple with iron hooks. You shall be covered in the dust picked up by the hero of your own Lord. Let us pray for our missionaries. Now I just need to find the key. Let us pray to God that he turns our enemies. Let us pray for the priests and the entire Holy Spirit so that it continues to grow stronger. Let us pray for abundant blessings in material matters. Let us pray for the parents that they may raise their children to vengeful and power hungry Christians. This we ask of you. Hear us, O Lord. Let us pray for our parents that they will not spare us the rod when it is preserved. This we ask of you. Hear us, O Lord. Let us pray for the Pope. That he follows the Lord's example. And <laughs> this we ask of you. Hear us, O oh Lord. Let us pray for the victory, as only they will enter paradise. This we ask. Of you. <laughs> 
Interesting style. Let us pray to God. Nice painting. Our enemies into the Let us pray to the priest and the entire Holy Spirit so that it continues to grow. On toll of the bell, mass will end after four. The Angelus. hands. Hmm. Must be a cipher lock.
eternity in heaven! Example and keeps us firmly in check. This I must keep my mind on the mission. Yes. Hear us, O oh Lord. Let us pray for the victors, as only they will enter paradise. This we ask. Hear yes. us, O oh Lord. Let us pray for the merciless Mother of God, that she may guard us against the sin of mercy. Spare us the rod when it is deserved. This we ask of you. Hear us, O oh Lord. Let us pray to the Pope that he follows the word of God and keeps us firmly in This we ask of you. Hear us, O oh Lord. Let us pray to the victory. Nice painting. Only they will enter paradise. This. Hear us, O Lord. Let us pray for the merciless Mother of God, that she may guard us against the sin of mercy. This we ask of you. Hear us, O Lord. Let us pray to Jesus, thanks for 
that he keeps us from wavering when the hour of vengeance comes. This we ask of you. Hear us, Hear us O Lord. O Lord. Let us pray for our missionaries that they may preach Christ's glory with force. Interesting. This we ask of you. Hear us, Hear us O Lord. Lord. Let us pray to God. That he turns our enemies into the van. Interesting style. This we ask of you. Hear us, Hear us, O Lord. Hear us, O Lord. Let us pray for the priests and the entire Holy Spirit. So that it continues to grow stronger. This we ask of you. Hear us, O Lord. hands. Hmm. Must be a cipher lock. Deus Volt. Yes, God willed it so. Shilas revealed the formula for Shurskin to the Cardinal. My superiors will surely find this interesting. The traitor will pay with his head, provided the formula is genuine. Is Shurskin. So the Cardinal lied to me. He didn't get the Shurskin from the Pope. He's making it himself. I wonder who else lied to me. There's only one way to find out.
father, who art our king, bereave us of our weakness, lest we forgive those who trespass against us. Draw our evil from darkness, so we may vanquish in thy name.
blind man.
well.
two frees. Not even a child would buy that story about the dagger you told the Inquisitor. And the one you told him was better, eh? Four fives. Fucker. Mine was the only one with any credibility to it. Yours were only good for ass wiping. The important thing is, we completed the task we were paid good money for. Ha ha ha! A single two. I was afraid Nontor would tell him something. She doesn't know anything. Besides, she wouldn't have said a word without the Countess's say-so. Three sixes. I think he's as sharp as they say. Sharper than you, that's for sure. Fuck. Just a pair of ones. I hear he fights well. He wouldn't be a match for us. Ah, the commander of the Cardinal Soldiers said he drew a blank card from the deck of St. Tamarius. What's the meaning of that? And what's the meaning of the three kings that the Cardinal Ingvar and Reuchlin drew a few years ago? There's no meaning, you dopes. They've become curious, did they? Four twos. Fuck the lot of them. Three threes. Shame you didn't strike a deal with the blind man. I would have sold him that chest set if not for the snotty girl that came with him. The little shit immediately saw that the pawns were damaged. What good is a chest set to a blind man? Who cares? Who won? Nobody. Each of us has 63 points. Impossible. You cheated, imp. It's always the same with you lot. Fuck the both of you. against the sin of mercy. Yes, we have to... 
Let us pray for abundant blessings in material matters. This we ask Hear us, O Lord. Let us pray for the pen. By the Lord's sword, mass is over. Time to go. See where this tunnel leads. Oh, no sign of the red coat. The mama's parade has begun. The revelries are in full swing. begin. I hope the innkeeper prepared something to eat. I am ravenous after yesterday's revelries. Where is everybody? hit the spot. Stale bread. Yesterday's meat.
high time I had words with the brothers Finkel. Stein. By the Lord's sword. is a bad omen. Satan's work. And a harbinger of coming calamities. It's just a cloud. Nothing more. I know of what I speak. We'll all end up like the innkeeper. End up? You haven't heard. Someone cut off the poor man's head. What? Where? There. Behind the stables. Hello, Master Matterdy. I'm guessing you already know what happened. Bad news always travels quickly. <laughs> Get her out of here. They killed him. They killed my beloved husband. <laughs> Who found the body? A farmhand working the stables. Have you questioned the locals? Nobody saw anything. But I'm positive that the innkeeper was killed somewhere else. The body was moved here afterwards. Indeed. He was beheaded and gutted like a hog. There are no traces of blood. Keeper claimed it never left his side. Did you search the area? We did. Didn't find anything, though. Farmhand. He's still green. Probably still shaking with fear. The killer cut out the liver. How do you know that? I studied anatomy at the Academy of the Inquisitorium. The harlot was also disemboweled. Do you think the same degenerate murdered the innkeeper? It's possible. Captain! What are you doing here? You should be standing guard by the dungeons. Speak, man! What happened? The hagman's lost his mind! He killed everyone! What do you mean, everyone? Speak more clearly. The guards you sent, they wanted to take off his mask, and he slaughtered them. All six. He did what? Soon after they came, the merchant's son arrived. The merchant that Master Inquisitor ordered to be locked up in the dungeons. The boy said the hangman would kill his father. Because the witch they'd burn at the stake cast some sort of curse on his mask. And? What did you do? What were we supposed to do? He was talking nonsense, so we smacked him. Then we unlocked the entrance to the dungeons. And the boys went in to get that bloody mask. A moment later, I heard their screams. I've no words to describe it. Did you see the bodies? No. I dared not go inside. So, perhaps they're still alive. If it's truly magic, Master Matterdean, 
then I must ask for your aid. My men's efforts will be for naught against magic. Only you can handle such a threat. Follow my man into the dungeons. I will follow shortly with all the guards I can muster. Let's go, master. Let's go, master. What is this stench? Forgive me, master. All this has made me shit myself. Follow me, Master. I'll guide you. Have you seen the cloud, Master? The one that appeared in the sky come morning? It's hard to miss. It looks like a demon straight from hell. More like a peculiar natural phenomenon. I don't know. Some say it's Satan's doing. Old Chrome said not to look at it for too long. Because it might mess with your head, make you do something evil. Idle prattle. And what if it's true? Maybe the hangman went mad because he stared at this damn cloud for too long. Maybe he's the one who killed the innkeeper. And then returned to the dungeons. And, still under the cloud's spell, did away with me comrades. Stop talking, rubbish fool. In fact, let's stop talking at all. Yes, master. Are you going to save my father, Master? I will do what I can. We didn't tell you everything. The witch we took the mask and outfit from, she cast a curse before she died. Do you remember what she said? She screamed from the flames that the Jester's mask would turn all who wear it mad, and that my father would die by a merry executioner's hand. But come morning, I heard about Roland's madness. It was then I understood that the curse was real. What must I do to break the curse? The witch must have said. Else the curse wouldn't take hold. I don't know. I swear. All saints be damned. Let's go. Maybe we'll manage to save someone. <laughs> No, no, no. I'm not going in there. You took a vow, remember? I'll piss on that vow. I have something that will guarantee your safety. It's the amulet of the witch who cast the curse on the mask. It protected her, so it will protect you as well. It'll make you invisible to the hangman. You sure? I planned on using it myself. I didn't know Inquisitors could use black magic. The end that justifies the means. Let's go then. A 
on this throne, my victory hangs. Victory is mine! <laughs> but what now? <laughs> Quiet is my purgatory. None are here to praise my glory. But act I must. I shan't be idle. Merchant Guts will be my right. What now? We must get that cursed mask off his face. on him and knock him out. I gave you the amulet. not like chains, for it will only serve the man who plucks it out to serve God's plan. Ah, he didn't find it on his own. He was given it to use in service of a clever ruse. Now I know the one behind this. An inquisitor is what I smell. Time to send him off to hell. Come then, Mortimer, my boy. You'll become my newest toy.
curse cast by the witch must have been powerful. Otherwise, the mask wouldn't have taken hold of the executioner's mind. I wonder. How can it be broken? The merchant's son claimed not to know. All others who might have known are dead. The unwalled is my only option. Executioner's flute. There's no magic in it, but I didn't sense any in the mask either. Against us. 
draw out even from darkness, so we may vanquish in thy name. Amen.
Dancing, drive and cheer. Dancing, prancing, full of cheer. He will even play the flute. Quite a spirited pursuit.
is going on? What am I doing here? Remember me, Knave. By the nails and thorns. It's you! I told you we'd meet again. Impossible! You're dead! I burned you at the stake! Be gone, foul spirit! Be gone! I will go. Once the curse is carried out. <laughs> what? What curse? Your boy didn't tell you? <laughs> Odd. I'm sure he heard it. Don't worry. The hangman will introduce you to it shortly. Now this poem must be spoken. Lest it leaves me dead and broken. Listen then, for it's important. He who dons this mask of jesters is bound to see his madness fester. He will snicker, rhyme, and cheer, dancing, prancing, full of cheer. He will even play the flute. Quite a spirited pursuit. The mask makes all who wear it stronger. Rights are right, or wrongs are wrong. Muscles bursting at the seams, but there's nothing there but dreams. For to wear it is to die. Hear my curse, my final cry. You as well will feel its hold. Lo, your punishment foretold by your merry hangman friend. With legs cut off, your life will end. How to change this dreadful plight? Plea with God, beseech his might. For only when his grace is gifted can this curse be ever lifted. Wait, wait! Wasn't I the main attraction? Time to move from words to action. It's over. The executioner is dead. What of my men? Slaughtered. Damn witches and their spells! Damn them to hell! What of my father? I'm sorry, lad. The executioner quartered him. Quartered him? <laughs> so the stand is mine now? This is the merchandise! <laughs> what the fuck? Has he gone mad? My prayers have finally been answered. Stupid daddy won't be ordering me around anymore. He can throw his stinking bones to the dogs. I shit on them! Little fucker. <laughs> Merciless Mary! He'll tear out his throat! It is God's will. Let him go! Let go! He 
he's gone. Why did you let it happen, Inquisitor? Animals are driven by instinct, which is the foundation for the divine law of nature. Man should not go against it. I don't understand. Friend's not aggressive. It's not his fault, Scam. He just felt the holy call of blood. It wouldn't have happened if the merchant's boy hadn't tormented him. Oh, so that's how it was. The dog paid the brat back in kind. Well, I'd be lying if I said I felt sorry for the lout. Are you feeling all right, Master Matterdean? You don't look well. I'm fine, just tired. I have something that will pick you right up. Take a swing. What is this? The Devil's Vintage from the Polish Kingdom. It burns your throat, but it'll get your blood pumping all right. You just need to drink it in moderation, lest enthusiasm triumph over reason. Oh, oh strong stuff. <laughs> Tis good, though. You'll feel it shortly. I shall leave you here, if you don't mind. I must have words with the brothers Finkelstein. Go, go. I have no further need of you here. Beware of the triplets. Greedy bastards can be treacherous. Yes. I have already experienced that. Where are the brothers? How should I know, my lord? They probably fucked off somewhere. Talk, or you'll be explaining to your employers why their warehouse caught fire. They went to the Take Your Breath Away whorehouse. They took some brat with them. They took a brat to a whorehouse? Some major deal. The brothers always talk business there. I know where it is. Have you been following me, Scam? It's a small town, Inquisitor. Yes. I've heard that before. I'll take you to the brothel for one silver angel. I'll pay. But only once we get there. Let's go then. I'm curious. What do you spend the money on? You've coaxed quite a lot out of me. I don't waste it, if that's what you're asking. So, what is it you do with it? I help those in need. Very commendable. But naive. Why? Because you can't help everybody. 
but I can help some. Are you afraid? They look odd. But so far, they're just clouds. That's right. Let's go, Inquisitor. We're wasting time. Tis Satan's doing. I heard that people started disappearing from the harbor. You think it's got something to do with these clouds? Definitely. <laughs> Mother of God, watch over us. Here we are. Catch, Camp. I'll manage on my own from here. friend. Hasty Greta is going with me. <laughs> the fuck she is! You had her last time! It's my turn now. Don't argue. Let the ladies decide for themselves. The fuck are you then? Uncle Good Advice? Yeah! You're not choosing today, so shut your trap! Well, well. The Inquisitor. We were just talking about you. You've played me for a fool. You knew where the dagger I asked you about came from, yet you still conceal the truth. Nothing is free in this world, Master Medadin. Inquisitors don't pay for information. They ask questions and sooner or later, they get answers. Well, you won't be getting any answers from us. There isn't enough room here for long weapons. I'll handle this. Wait outside with the girls. I'll join you in a minute. So got done quick.
her husband to the lips of infidelity. And? I reckon the cat's out the bag now. How do you know he was cheating on her? Because he was doing it with me. With you, too? These damn clouds are giving me goose flesh. Then stop staring at them already, huh? I can't. Me head keeps tilting up on its own. Satan must have possessed you. Quick, spit over your left shoulder. Will that help? Certainly about it. Did you see that? Fucking Finkelstein nearly knocked me down! He ran like the devil was chasing him. More like someone he cuckolded. Half the town wants him for that. Right. He was wounded, so there must have been a duel. Must have been some bruiser. After all, Jonas is a fencing expert. Kick enough rocks and you'll find a scorpion. Finkelstein is hiding out here somewhere. I feel close.
Get ready to meet the creator, fucker! I saved your life. This is how you repay me. Only a fool shows mercy to his enemy. Well, well. You know your scripture. Who taught it to you? Your mother? My mother died when I was two. I don't remember her. I'm an Inquisitor, boy. Those who raise a hand against me invite the Lord's wrath. I don't believe you. It's the truth. You'll burn in hell for this. Shut up, or I'll shoot! Have you killed a man before? I'll do it. You'll see. Really? Stop! I'll kill you if you don't stop! Enough of this. Give me the crossbow. Ah! Blast it! He sank to the bottom. encouragement and motivation to those unwilling to speak. See this crank? Once I start turning it, iron spikes will slowly begin to protrude from the holes in the seat. They're very sharp. The more I turn the crank, the further they'll extend. First, they'll pierce your clothes and your skin. Then, they'll go through your guts and your balls stop until they come out the other side. Of course, I will take my time. I'll use the Inquisitor's medley. It's the most effective method for conducting an interrogation. Question, pain. Question, pain. Question, pain. It proceeds as such, methodically and without emotion, until the desired result is achieved. So, do you still claim I won't learn anything from you? Go get donkey fucked, Inquisitor! Think about it. 
I don't want to keep torturing you. But I will if you leave me with no choice. And believe me, I won't stop with the chair. So what will it be? Are you going to tell me about this dagger willingly? from the ancient city of Tanis. According to legend, it was crafted from a star that the god Seth struck from the sky for Egyptian priests. As far as I know, it was used to perform magic rituals. After Egypt had been conquered by the Romans, the dagger made its way to a centurion, who changed the pommel and ground down the blade to shape it into a pugio. supposed to believe that? Do you take me for a fool? I'm telling the truth! I swear! We learned everything from Reuchlin! Countess Isabella commissioned us to find the blade two years ago. The old man worked with her back then. He told us what the dagger looked like. He also told us its history, pointing out the locations where it might have been hidden. I've conducted many interrogations in my life, but none have ever gone this smoothly. Do you know what this leads me to conclude? You're lying. Stop! I'll talk. The dagger is one of three blades. We found it in the far north, in the ruins of an ancient city. Stop! I'll tell you everything. There was a sword also, and a spearhead. Countess! She was supposed to get the dagger too, but someone... someone impersonated her servant girl. What did they want with them? I don't know. The Countess called them... the blades from... Kaloga. And the Cardinal? Did he say anything? No. He just mentioned... Reuchlin! Who paid you to lie to me? <sighs> the woman... in a Venetian mask! So she's behind this? Who is that cursed woman? And why does she keep toying with me? She didn't want me to learn the truth about the dagger. the blades from Caliga. And then there's Reuchlin. He keeps coming up. I think I should have a look at his grave. I might find some answers there. I told you everything. You wanted to know. Pull out the spikes. I beg you.
I tried. <laughs> nice epitaph. An unknown grave. Johannes Reuchlin. This is the grave of my vision. Fresh blood. Withered flowers. They were most likely knocked down during the struggle. Broken tombstone. Interesting. Looks like the oil lamp I saw in the innkeeper's hand during the vision. One silver angel. Innkeepers or murderers? The Munich made dagger used by the Lance Connects. So, this is where the innkeeper was killed. I wonder why he came here. Could there be a secret hidden inside the grave? Reuchlin's corpse? I don't understand any of this anymore. What's the significance of that damn grave? It must be important if Jesus keeps showing it to me in visions. The Unworld. I'd rather not go there. But it's the only place where I'll learn the truth.
you, O Lord, for just to find the means that lead to the end. skulls. Our Father, who art our King, bereave us of our weakness, lest we forgive those who trespass against us. Draw our evil from the darkness, so we may vanquish in thy name. He did sniff something out. Well, he won't learn much if he slaughtered them. She doesn't know who delivered it. The innkeeper didn't say where he was going either. 
He just left, saying he'd be back soon. Have you confirmed that?
navegando el mundo. La vida de tu te, el infano de tu te. Amén. Santa Mejana Hangala, defendenos en previo contra el edificio de insidios diablos de tu presidio. Para ti, mi Dios, suplices este programa, tu que fe, princeps de ti es celestis, Satanama de los que espíritus malignos, que fui ad patitión de manamar en pavegando el mundo. La vida de tu te, la vida de tu te. Dean only killed two, Hans and Aaron. He dragged an unconscious Jonas to the dungeons.
Another one? So quickly? Speak. The innkeeper's wife claims that her husband received a message from you, my lady. She doesn't know who delivered it. The innkeeper didn't say where he was going either. He just left, saying he'd be back soon. So I was right. The necklace thief impersonated my servant again. The innkeeper wouldn't have trusted anyone else. The last person to see him was Amelia, the little one running all over the place. She was of the opinion that the innkeeper was headed to the graveyard. Have you confirmed that? I discovered a pool of blood, near Reuchlin's grave. I was afraid of that. What else have you learned? Harlots from the Take Your Breath Away whorehouse told me how the Inquisitor slaughtered the brother Finkelstein. Huh. <laughs> so he did sniff something out. Well, he won't learn much if he slaughtered them. Matter Dean only killed two. Hans and Aaron. He dragged an unconscious Jonas to the dungeons. That's not good. If he tortured him, then he already knows that the Pugio is one of the three blades from Caliga. The question is whether he realizes what they are. That's not all. Another cloud has appeared in the sky. Another one? So quickly? Yes, my lady. Then we shouldn't tarry any longer. We must act!
That damned Finkelstein lied to me. The city of Tannis and the star that Seth cast from the sky. It was all a fairy tale. The dagger is one of the three blades from Caliga. I have no idea what those blades are. But there's certainly an important connection between them and Reuchlin's grave. Otherwise, I wouldn't have heard about them in the Umworld. I think I should stop by the library. I may find information about Caliga there. I'm sorry, Master Inquisitor, but you cannot enter without the Cardinal's permission. I know rejection is not something you are used to. Nevertheless, I ask you to respect our rules and return once you have His Eminence's assent. Brother Merrill. Welcome, Master Mortimer. What brings you here this time? Questions. He who asks a question does not err easily. Have you heard of the Three Blades from Caliga? Three Blades from Caliga? Hmm. Not that I recall. Ask Brother Lothar. Maybe he'll know something. He's sitting over there, at the end of the hall. The place is strangely calm. Have the monks seen the clouds that have appeared in the sky? Ha! <laughs> they don't scare us. They look like Satan's work, and he's got no power over us. And if it's God that sent them, well, we'll happily obey his will. I am sorry, Master Inquisitor. But you cannot enter. Sorry, Master Inquisitor, but you cannot help. Once you have his eminence's assent. Hello, Brother Lothar. Master Vadadin. Forgive the interruption, but I need your help. Do you know where the city of Caligar is? No one knows the exact location. It's not even certain whether the city existed. According to legend, it was founded by Tiberius's legionnaires, who survived the battle for Rome. Hunted by the invincible army of the faithful, they supposedly made their way to the far north and settled there. Have you heard of the Blades from Caliga? No, Master, I know nothing of them. Try speaking to the Librarian. There might be a book or two on the Three Blades. You 
people lying, brother. I never mentioned the number of blades. How do you know there are three? Well, there's a certain apocrypha. However, I don't know if I can tell you about it. I'm an inquisitor, Brother Lothar. There is nothing you cannot tell me. Very well. You probably know that Jesus thrice fell during the Way of the Cross. Of course. Every Christian knows this. According to the Apocrypha, Jesus did not fall under the weight of the patibulum he was carrying. He fell because he was wounded by three legionnaires who were leading him to Golgotha. Gaius cut Jesus' arm with a dagger, Cassius stabbed his thigh with a sword, and Longinus thrust a spear into his calf. Three blades. I ventured that the legionnaires were among the Romans who founded the city of Caliga. Not just among them. They commanded them. The name of the city is an amalgamation of the first letters from their Latin names. C.A. from Cassius, L.O. from Longinus, and G.A. from Gaius. Caliga. Why is the church keeping this a secret? First, it is not known whether the Apocrypha is genuine. Other sources do not bear the information it contains. Second, it was deemed unreasonable to spread rumors about the existence of weapons that wounded God. The blades, if they exist, may harbor great power. No one knows what could happen if they fell into the wrong hands. Luckily, they've never been found. Thank you, Brother Lothar. You've helped me greatly. Unfortunately, the blades have been found. All three are in Königstein. The mayor is right. Something sinister is afoot. It's high time I paid him a visit. Maybe that mysterious Persian of his can cast more light on the matter. Merciless Mother of God, watch over us. It's the apocalypse! Run for your lives! We're all gonna die! Run to your homes, people! Run!
That's odd. By the Lord's sword. Heart's been cut out. He smells of wine. Probably tried to cure himself with it. His hands are empty. gastric problems. A necklace with the coat of arms of Königstein. This must be some sort of code. What's this? A card from the deck of St. Timerius. It appears as if it fell from the mayor's hand. Justice? I wonder who the mayor's target for it was. Ingvar watches over the cards, which means that he is either involved with the murder, or someone is trying to cast suspicion on him. I wonder, what happened to the Persian? The mayor wanted to introduce me to him today, so he should be nearby. Maybe he's hiding. The Persian. It's a mannequin. The mayor said he didn't trust anyone else. If he really did bestow his secrets upon this thing, they must be inside. I probably need to beat him in chess. sword. I must have made a wrong move. And the Lord's sword. I must have made a wrong move. Sword. I must have made a wrong move. I hope there's some other way to open the locker.
mayor's private notes. I can't trust anyone anymore. There are spies everywhere. Every citizen of Königstein could be involved in this intrigue. Even Captain Bertram. I pretend not to know or see anything, but that's only for appearances. They know I'm following their actions. I must be careful. There are two vying factions in Königstein. One is called the Cult, the other the Sabbath. The Cult is a group of Christian fanatics who consider themselves followers of the true faith. In their view, humanity is permeated with a primordial evil that causes Satan to grow ever stronger. They believe that exterminating humanity is the only means of vanquishing the devil. This is why they seek to bring about the apocalypse. The Sabbath has a different goal. It is a mysterious group founded by the first Christians who believed that Jesus should have died on the cross for humanity's sins. They believe that Jesus was possessed by the devil who forced him to descend from the cross. The black magic that was then unleashed tainted the world. They believe that the only way of restoring the disrupted order of things is to kill Jesus. I admit that bringing about the apocalypse seems just as absurd as killing Christ, who's been dead for centuries. But what if there's a grain of truth to it all? I know that both groups seek to achieve their goals with the three blades from Caliga. I didn't manage to discover the nature of these blades. One of my spies managed to determine only that Johannes Reuchlin could have been connected to all of this. The old medic got drunk at the inn once. He was bragging that he would soon change the face of the world. He also mentioned he'd become immortal. No one took his words seriously. However, there's no doubt that Reuchlin's sudden death and his funeral were very odd. Long ago, Johannes was a close associate of Countess Isabella. Then he became one of his eminence's men. Ingvar could probably tell me exactly what his master was dealing with. Alas, the medic is protected by the Cardinal. I cannot interrogate him. Fortunately, an Inquisitor can do what a mayor cannot. into each other, Inquisitor. This time it's a happy coincidence. A silver angel? For what? For delivering a message. Tell the Countess that I must speak to her about the three blades from Caliga. Can you remember that? Sure. I'll be waiting for an answer at the clinic. Is something wrong with you? No. I just need to talk to Ingvar. Run along now.
I'm looking for the venerable Ingvar. I have not seen him today. Hello, brother. Where can I find the medic? I don't know, master. I'm new around here. Have you seen Ingvar, brother? I need to speak to him. He is probably at his place. He lives above the clinic. Look for the door with the rod of Asclepius on it. medical studies. Who would have expected? Ingvar likes to drink, just like any other. He didn't finish his dinner. A secret passage. The 
catacombs. It's the Inquisitor! Tis true. Kill the horse, son! something valuable in the catacombs since they're patrolled by the cardinal soldiers Secrets of Persian medicine, of herbs and ways of brewing healing decoctions. Hmm, it's probably some kind of trick. The necklace of the Countess's missing servant. So, her disappearance was Ingvar's doing. The damned medic used the necklace to get the Pugio. He also used it to lure the innkeeper to the graveyard and kill him there. The treatment of melancholy should begin by perforating the patient's skull. After which, the person should be hung upside down from the ceiling so that the noxious matter finds an outlet from the head. It is important that no one is near the patient during this time because the melancholy that exits the afflicted can take hold of a healthy person instead. Then they too will need to be treated. Oh, a novel method. in eight books, the famous work by Celsus. Of necromancy and the arcane art of soul transplantation. Well, well, someone's been dabbling in black magic. A spell allowing one to transplant a human soul into another body opposes the laws of nature. For this reason, its magic does not last. It needs to be strengthened with the blood of a fallen angel until the soul is permanently bound to a body. It is a long process. However, it can be hastened by feeding the fallen one human entrails, thus making his blood more potent. The mystery of the murders has been solved. Ingvar was performing a transplantation ritual. He needed the victim's organs to make the fallen angel's blood bind the soul to its new host. I wonder how he managed to gain control over him. Whose soul did he transplant? And who supplied the body? And what is that? The 
markings look like those after opening a door. Sanctus? Only a few people can light this flame. What did Ingvar need it for? The nails and thorns. An Anakian circle. Whatever the purpose that drove its creation, it will not be easy to get Ingvar to reveal it. I'll learn more quickly in the Umworld. Our father, what our king, bereaves of our weakness, lest we forgive those who trespass against us. Draw out even in darkness, so we may be vanquished in thy name.
The third blade will soon fall into our hands. The Vina Vetuta and Infernum Detruda. Amen.
the fallen on her innards. Spirit 
leading the cult. They remain worthy of leading the cult. The three kings. Perfect. Now speak. The circle is ready. When the moon rises, we shall perform the summoning ritual. The Countess's servant has already been sacrificed. We can feed the fallen one her innards. Everything is proceeding according to plan. The girl's necklace will allow Johannes to intercept the dagger. The spear remains the only problem. We still don't know how to obtain it. Do not concern yourselves with that. The third blade will soon fall into our hands. I have personally made sure of that. I must admit, Inquisitor, you've managed to impress me. I figured that you'd show the Pugio to the brothers Finkelstein, which is why I pay them to mislead you. But, despite all that, you still managed to learn of the existence of the Three Blades from Galaga. Brother Merrill told me you've been inquiring about
Finkelstein claimed that it was the woman in the Venetian mask who had paid them. <laughs> the second-rate peddler deceived an inquisitor. <laughs> ah, I think I've overestimated you after all. Do you know what these blades are? They're the weapons the Roman legionnaires used to wound Christ during his ascent to Golgotha. That's correct. What you don't know, however, is the purpose that we intend to use them for. I will gladly tell you. You only need to decide whose side you're on. Are you with us? Or are you with the Countess? I am on nobody's side. I'm the Lord's devoted servant. I knew you'd say that. You Inquisitors are so predictable. Seize him! Let's put an end to this masquerade. I know who you are. The Venerable Ingvar. His Eminence Ansgar von Niedrich. And the beautiful Liliana. Or rather, Johannes Reuchlin. Hello, Mortimer. You've managed to learn quite a lot. Bravo. Why Liliana? What made you choose her? Well... She was the only one we had on hand. Johannes was poisoned. Liliana and I found him dying in a cell. But it was too late to save him. 
I had to use a spell devised by Magnus of Potvar that allows for the transfer of one soul into a different body. I extracted the soul from you, Hannes, and implanted it into Liliana. Thanks to her, we managed to obtain the Pugio. So it all turned out for the best in the end. You obtained it, and lost it. You are to blame for that, Inquisitor. Remember when we were assaulted in the alley? I hurt my arm there because of you. A seemingly harmless cut became the gate through which Liliana's soul returned to her body. When that idiot figured out she had killed the harlot, she panicked. And for a while, I lost access to her mind. That was when she got rid of the dagger. Luckily, the blade found its way back to us. You have followers of the cult. Heretics. Your fate is sealed. I find your arrogance irritating, Inquisitor. It is you who were on your knees before us, not the opposite. Wait, Ingvar. Let's give him a chance. Before my soldiers rendered you unconscious, you said that you were not on anyone's side. I hope that you'll change your mind once you understand our goal. You want to bring about the Apocalypse. It's the only way to purge the world of filth and omnipresent evil. The end must come if we are to have a new beginning. The wheel has already been set in motion. We have summoned the Four Horsemen into the Unworld. So that's what the Anarchian Circle is for. I thought that you'd summon the Fallen Angel. But you had gone well beyond that. That's the reason for these accursed clouds. Were the killings also connected to this? The ritual required human sacrifices. The Countess's servant had the necklace. The mayor was close to uncovering the truth. And the innkeeper was spying for Isabella. By murdering them, you managed to kill two birds with one stone. And what about the harlot? Why her? She was an easy and necessary target. You are fools if you believe you'll be able to control the horsemen. Once they cross over into our world, they will destroy everything and everyone, including you. We will not be the ones commanding them. Jesus will. Jesus? Everyone thinks that he died centuries ago. <laughs> but that is not true. Christ only fell into lethargy. And we will soon awaken him. When our Lord returns to us, the words of the Revelation will be fulfilled. The Four Horsemen will purge the earth of sinners and non-believers. Christ will then lead the followers of the cult to create a new world. One based on the words of the scripture. How do you mean to accomplish that? The three blades from Kalaga are the key. Each of them can be used to open the door to the Unworld, where Jesus' slumbering emanation resides. It is the only weapon with which God can be killed. Its power will make Christ awaken from his lethargy. When this comes to pass, we will hand the blades over to him in an act of offertory, which will make him invincible. Three gifts from the three kings. The Gladius has been in our hands for a long time. We already have the Pugio as well. Unfortunately, Isabella still has the Hosta. We plan to take the spear from her by force. 
but the bitch's palace is a fortress. A small force is enough to defend it. Even a mighty army will break on its walls. Unlike a man whom she had previously hosted as her guest before. You want me to steal the third blade for you? If you do this, you will have the honor of resurrecting Christ Vengeful. Just think. You'll be given an opportunity to commune with the Creator. I will never join your sect. Release me and hand over the blades from Caligo, and I promise to be merciful. I will give you a quick death. <laughs> <laughs> you are not in the best position to negotiate. Inquisitors don't negotiate with heretics. They just kill them. You're wrong. This time, it's the Inquisitor who will die. We had hoped you would agree to get the Hester for us. But in truth, we don't truly need it. We already have the Third Blade. We are looking at it right now. Remember the card you drew from the deck of St. Tamarius? Carte Blanche? That's correct. It was blank because you can replace any other card from the deck with it. I don't understand. <laughs> I'm not surprised to hear that. When I realized we couldn't obtain the third blade, I started looking for an alternative. It was then that I learned that the solution to our problems could be you, Master Metadine. Yes, it was I who sent the information about the vampire to the Holy Office. I also pulled some strings so that you would be sent to investigate the case. I did so because you carry within you something that will replace the third blade. You've mistaken me for someone else. I carry nothing within me. Poor Mortimer. People went to great lengths to make you think that. It was hidden within you when you were a child. Unfortunately, we're going to have to kill you to extract it. Why didn't you do that immediately? That thing has great power. There is a danger that we will not be able to control it. We also believed you would join us. However, you made a different choice. You leave us no choice, Inquisitor. Take comfort in the fact that you'll die by the very weapon that wounded our Lord. Bindings! Ah! Ah! My eyes! Yes. Damned brat! You will not deceive me, old man. 
die, dog! You won't stop me, Inquisitor. Come! I summon you! He's got a weapon! Sick him, friend! Sword. This is hell. Naive fool. This is but hell's antechamber. Once I defeat you, demons will feast on your soul. Then you will see what true hell is. Is. I'm going to cut you down, human bastard! Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm going to cut you down, human bastard. Think of something quickly. By the nails of thorns. The mask of the merry executioner from Tiana. It's my only hope. It is likely enough that I am going to my doom. <sighs> the last march of the Inquisitor. <laughs>
this one has fallen, truly. Though his ego was unruly. <laughs> now I hear the masks, vile chatter, telling me to grab my dagger, carve myself with proper swagger. Samurai, their way up follow. Soon my stomach I'll have hollowed. <laughs> You're scaring me, Inquisitor. Take off that mask and stop fooling around. That's the pickle that I'm in. I can't remove it without skin. brought me here. And now he's dead. He died defending you. Like a true friend. Can you tell me what the Countess said in response? I wasn't able to talk to her. Her guards didn't let me into the palace. I told them I had an important message for her, but they laughed at me. That's all right. Myself. Can I say goodbye to him? Of course. Let's get out of here, Scam. Farewell, friend. I will never forget you. How did you get your hands on Shurskin? Remember when I came to the inn for my Silver Angel? I took some from your pouch before I woke you up. I would never have given it to myself. However, God had a different plan, it seems. It does work in mysterious ways. Why did he take friend away from me? It wasn't God who took him from you, Scam. But a fallen angel. So why didn't God stop him? He is all-powerful after all. God doesn't do things for us. He only provides opportunities, allowing us to choose one of many paths. I don't understand. Are you saying we could have saved friend? That we had an opportunity but failed to see it? I'm saying he also had a choice. It's not fair. I know, Scam, but that's how life is. The sooner you accept it, the easier time you'll have getting through it. Sword. What's going on here? The riots in town have gotten worse ever since the fourth cloud appeared in the sky. Fourth? 
by the nails and thorns. What now? I must get something from the Countess. I know an underground entrance to the palace. It's the fastest way. Come on, I'll take you. Let's have a look inside the palace. Maybe we'll find someone there. What do you think? Where is everybody? Hurry up, Inquisitor! Maybe they found out about the riots and fled. I doubt it. The Countess's palace is a fortress. Her guards would have no trouble defending it. So, why isn't anyone here? We'll find out soon, I hope. By the Lord's sword? What happened here? Uh, are the, they all dead? It looks like it. I'll see if anyone survived. You hurry and get help. Those who did this may still be in the palace. All right. I don't expect to find anyone alive here. He's gone. The wounds look like those from a bear attack. They all have similar ones. Strange. This one's dead too. Another corpse. I think it's Nantal. Master Matterdeen. Nasty wound. Luckily, it's not bleeding. I'll believe it. What happened here? It was Isabella. She's the vampire you've been looking for. <sighs> the Countess. When the second cloud appeared in the sky, Isabella ordered me to bring a few paupers from the harbor to the palace. She claimed that his eminence was a follower of the cult, and that he meant to bring about the apocalypse. I was convinced that she wanted to stop him by stirring up the common folk against him. But you were wrong. The Countess led the paupers to a secret chamber, and ordered that no one disturb them. <sighs> After several hours, she emerged from the chamber as a bloodthirsty monster. It was then that I realized that she was a member of the Sabbath, and that she wanted to use the blades from Galaga to carry out her own plan. How do you know about the cult, the Sabbath, and the Three Blades? I am a spy for the Holy Office's inner circle. I discovered everything by collecting information about Galaga. You must stop the Countess. Unfortunately, I won't be able to help you. Forgive me. She's fainted.
Michael mentioned a secret chamber. The Countess is probably hiding there. This might be the entrance to the secret chamber. Master Matterdeen, I see you've managed to acquire the second blade. You've arrived just in time. I could use your help. Don't be so sure, Countess. I have different intentions. Hear me out first, then decide. I know full well who you are and what you intend. I also know that you will never succeed. You cannot kill Christ. He's already dead. You don't understand anything, Inquisitor. You didn't see the crucifixion, but I was there. As Jesus ascended Golgotha, I was chosen. I became one of the beings of light, tasked with spreading his word. Unfortunately, Christ succumbed to Satan's whispers. He descended from the cross, though he was supposed to die on it. The black magic that manifested at that moment defiled the world, changing the beings of light into vampires hungering for blood. Those of us who believed that evil could be undone created the Sabbath. For 1,500 years, we've been seeking a solution. And at long last, I have found it. I will venture a guess and say that your solution is the Three Blades from Caliga. You think that Christ is dead, but it is not true. His dark emanation exists in the Unworld as the Merc. I will annihilate it with the Hasta. Then the divine plan will be fulfilled. Jesus will die for humanity's sins. The Unworld will become paradise, and light will once again fill the hearts of vampires. If one blade is enough to get the job done, why did you need the others? Their power was meant to give me the strength necessary to fight the Merc. I waited patiently until an opportunity to obtain them could present itself. However, the clouds heralding the coming of the Four Horsemen made me realize that I needed to hurry. You knew that the cult meant to bring about the Apocalypse? Not the cult. Reichlin. Johannes used to share my beliefs. He even helped me uncover the truth about the Blades from Caliga. But then... He lost himself to the foul vision of the world spread by the followers of the cult centuries ago. Johannes infected Ingvar and the Cardinal with it, 
But he didn't share his full knowledge with them. That is what allowed him to pull the strings. Of the three of them, only he posed a real danger. So you poisoned him? Unfortunately, it was not effective. When the clouds began appearing in the sky, it became obvious that Ingvar had managed to save Reutlin. I realized then that I had to act with greater haste to gain an advantage over my foes. I only needed the strength that the three blades were supposed to grant me. So I did something I desperately wished to avoid. I awoke my vampiric power. By feeding on human blood. I hoped that a few paupers would suffice, but I was wrong. The taste of blood stirred dark desires and a hunger that I was not able to control. I had to kill everyone at the palace to satisfy those urges. It is possible that I will burn in hell for this. But if this is the price for restoring the light, then I am ready to pay it. I will face God with my head held high. But first, I will stop the apocalypse. There will be no apocalypse. Ingvar, Reuchlin, and the Cardinal are dead. Their death is not enough. The four horsemen must be sent back into the void from whence they were summoned. If they remain in the Unworld any longer, they will create a gate through which they will cross over into our world, and we will then meet our doom. You know just as well as I do that God did not send you here for nothing. Help me, Inquisitor. Let the Lord's will be done. I am a servant of God. I will never support heresy. Hand over the spearhead, Countess. If you don't, I will take it from you by force. Fool! You ruin everything! I will not let you!
You have won, Inquisitor. But it is not the end. You must send back the horseman. Remember an act of sacrifice is the only way. Countess wasn't lying when she talked about the strength coming from the Three Blades. Sword, Amelia. I took her to the Unworld with me.
worked. Where are you, Inquisitor? Help me! Amelia! I was too late. She's trapped here forever. of his will, hiding in Amelia's body this whole time. That is why she was able to remove the cursed mask from my face. Destroy it, Mortimer. It drips with evil. Let me save the girl. That is not in my power. You used her, and now you're leaving her. Don't be sentimental, Inquisitor. The end justifies the means. 
you have followed this principle yourself. It allowed you to triumph over your enemies. The end? You mean the Three Blades from Canada? Are you here for them? Where are they? Are you asking about this? Tis but dust, Scamp. But also, so much more. Who are you? My guardian angel? Your guardian angel? <laughs> Wake up, Inquisitor! There. Finally. Ugh. You were right about the bloodsucker. The damned Countess covered her tracks. Well, I don't know what miracle let you survive this bloodbath, but believe me when I say that I'm glad to see you in good health. Miracles come from faith, Captain. You don't look well. There. Take a swig of the Devil's Vintage. It'll clear your mind right up. What's the situation in town? We managed to restore order with the help of the military from the nearby garrison. Are the strange clouds still in the sky? The wind blew them away as we were making our way here. That's good. Where's that prying scamp you sent for us? She ran here at breakneck speed. She's gone. Huh. Gone without a trace, eh? That's typical of her. If you ask me, she's probably snooping around the palace. Never mind that. What are your plans? I will go to Rome. I must give the account of all that's happened here to my superiors. That's quite the journey. Take the Devil's Vintage with you. It'll keep you warm on the road when the rains come. <sighs> Thank you, Captain. You're a good man. I hope we meet again. Master Matterdine, wait. I believe this is yours. Burn the damn thing. Or don't. I'll take the mask with me. To escape from nasty scrapes. Sometimes not will do but japes. <laughs> <laughs>